Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and that's another episode of a multi-part tutorial on Apple's Logic Pro 10.5. In this episode, we look at the automation of Logic, how to automate the volume, the panning, but also other parameters of the audio effects or the instruments. Have fun! So if you want to automate, let's say for example, the volume of this channel, simply click this button here that you see that is called Show or Hide Automation. You also can do this with the letter A of your keyboard. At the moment, you turn it on, you see here the parameter that you make the automation for. Let's start with volume. Volume is the volume of your channel. And we go here to the normal pointer tool and say here we want to be at zero dB. Also, let's zoom out a little bit. Also here at part two, but in the middle we go down to something like this here, minus 30 dB. And you immediately see also here how the volume of your fader is going down and up. It's doing the automation you made. And you also can make an automation for the panning. So here we have some categories. Let's go to main panning and here we are. Let's make a click here and here and we go up to the left and down to the right and now we will see here the automation of the volume and here of the panning. Wonderful. If you want to see the different automations there are two ways to do it. Number one you can change it here used and you can change between them. You also can do this with command Y. Command Y, Command Y, so you step through them. The other possibility is that you see them at the same time by clicking this arrow here. And now we can see here the volume and here the panning at the same time. So let's add an automation for a plugin. Let's open the auto filter that is here on this track. I turn it on and now I go here in this track to auto filter and cut off, cut off is this knob here. Do we go up here and up here and go down here, go up there and down here. Let's see how this sounds and how it looks if you look to this knob, this knob and that knob. everything works fine. So the next thing that could be important for you is to delete something of your automation. Number one, you can double click any point to erase it. Here we are. Number two, I make now undo. You can select many points and delete them with the backspace, uh, backspace key. For this, there is the automation select tool. And with this, I can make a square like this. And if I now say backspace on my keyboard, I can delete it or I also can copy it like this. But there's a faster way. You stay at the pointer tool and click simply the option key. And now you can select many points to, for example, erase them or move or copy them. Another way to do it is if you click control click here in this area, you can say delete visible automation. Visible means not that if you zoom in that you don't erase everything that is on top here in the beginning. You delete everything of the whole track, but just of this parameter. So it means not the volume, not the panning. Let's check this out. Control click here in this area. Delete visible automation. And now the cutoff is gone, but the rest is here. Or you can say, delete all automation. Now it's gone. All right. Something else that could be very nice for you is to work with curves. What is a curve do doing? Let's make an automation here. And let's say we want to go down, not linear like now. We want to go down with the curve means we go down 
where we fast and then slowly we come to the rest of the point. For this, we need the automation curve tool. And now we can do it like this. Or we go down very slowly in the beginning and faster at the end. You see, it makes a big difference if I have a curve like this, where here closely nothing at this point, or this curve where it's still here, where I can still listen to it. There are two other curves, the S curves. You get them by going to the left or to the right, or to the left. So sometimes maybe you want to copy a curve. This is very easy. Let's make another click here. And now we select them all with the option key. And now we do it with the option key. We click here and now we moved it and copied it over here. So there's another nice feature to create an automation. Let's erase everything we did. You go to touch. And maybe we should, before we do this, we make a line over something like this, over here and over there. So if you go to touch, at the moment you touch a button, you are erasing everything that is happening until you release it. At the moment you release it, it's going back to its original position. Let's open the plugin. Here we are. This is the button we want to automate. We go now in the touch mode. And again, I touch it. I overwrite everything as long as I touch it. At the moment I remove it, it's going back to this automation. Let's check this out. All right. Here I released the button and immediately it went back to where it was before. This is different if you go to from touch to latch. At latch, it stays where it is. So this looks like this. Now it stays at the point where I released it. And there is number three, or in this list it's number four, the right command. Be careful with this, because with this you can erase a lot of your automation. But at the moment, it's in play mode, it's erasing everything you did even didn't touch the button, immediately it was erasing everything from the automation that is happening here. For me, this is very old fashioned. In fact, it's coming from the old mixer, like the SSL mixer that you find in the big studios, especially in the 80s. For me, it's much easier to paint the automation with the mouse. I only use the touch mode to select the knob I want to make the automation because sometimes it's not too easy to find parameter you want to automate here in this list. Go to auto filter and then you find it here. It's much easier simply to go to the touch mode, click one time to the button you want to automate, immediately go back to the read mode and now you can paint your little automation here like this. See here. And let's make another one for this here. So I go back to touch. I touch it one time, immediately go back to read. And now I can do something for the fatness here. There's one last point I want to show you. And that's a rhythmic automation. And this is not so easy in Logic Pro, but it's possible. I sometimes work with the program Ableton Live. There it's much easier to make an automation, but Logic is a great program, don't get me wrong. Just the rhythmic automation of tracks is for me easier in Ableton Live. But it's also possible here, so let's check this out. With here this pad sound, and we want to make an automation in 16th on the filter of this track. So I turn on the filter and we already have selected the cutoff of this track. So at the moment, if I add a point, it's not snapping. So I can't make it at a special rhythmic point. Not so easy. So 
the easier way is here to turn on the snap. You can turn on the snap for especially the mouse when you cut something or you make a pattern longer or smaller. But you also, if you go on this list, can turn it on for your snap automation. You make it active and now we are on 32s. So we can set a point here and here and here and here, here and here. These are the 16th of a bar. Let's listen to that. This one is this one is wrong here. All right. And now let's click in between and bring it down like this. And here and here. And now I want to go down just one time and then immediately go up. So I move this point over here and here I have again the problem. If I do this, I'm erasing this point. To not erase this point, you have to click the Alt key. That's one of the points why I think, yeah, it's a little bit complicated in logic, but it's possible. All right. So now with a double click, I erase this point. So it sounds like this. Okay. Now we can simply copy it. I just erase these points. Uh, I hold down the option key and now we copy it to this point and to this point. And one more time to this point. Here we have a little problem. Let's fix that. Hold down the option key. Okay. Maybe sometimes we erase one to make here the rhythmic more interesting. And now we copy everything again, not like this. We hold down the option key and move it. Yeah, that's the point where I say it's not so easy in logic, but it's possible. My name is Thomas Foster. Please write me in the comments how you liked this video or wherever it helped you. To not miss another episode of Logic Pro 10.5, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell to be informed when I release another episode. Thank you for joining me. Always stay creative. Cheers! My name is Thomas Foster and if you like producing music then you probably need regular audio loops. So good sounding drum loops, percussion, guitar, vocal and many other samples. And there is a new exciting web page I'm involved in developing, Mutant.com. Mutant is a search engine for audio loops and samples. The stuff sounds really great and is well produced and mastered. The incredible thing is that all thought Mutant actually sees itself as a web shop. At the moment, almost all sounds are free. You do not have to enter an email address. Just go to mutant.com, search for the desired audio file and click download. And it's really fun to work with. At that point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers. Mm -hmm.